So up next, we have a presentation from Mike DeHoff. He's a small business owner, welder, boat builder, and river runner in Moab, Utah. He also leads the Returning Rapids Project research team, which, which works to monitor, document, and ponder the changes in the Lake Powell affected zones of Cataract Canyon. The main tools they use to achieve this are historic maps and photos, repeat photography, and pre-Glen Canyon Dam guidebooks. So what started for them as a simple curiosity has grown into a large effort to monitor, study, and communicate to the general public the changes happening on the Colorado River and the effects of Glen Canyon Dam. One of their main goals is to share information in a simple and easily accessible way with the general public and those who share an interest and love of rivers through field binders released in the spring, public presentations, and a growing website at returningrapids.com. While trying to figure out when other rapids were coming back in Cataract Canyon, it became apparent that many river runners shared the same curiosity. The project's efforts have attracted the attention of scientists from Utah State University's Center for Colorado River Studies, the University of Utah, USGS Utah Water Science Center, Western Water Assessment, the Grand Canyon Monitoring and Research Center, and the National Park Service. Besides Mike, the Returning Rapids Project research team also includes Peter Lefebvre, a professional river guide, Chris Benson, a geologist and river guide, USGS staffer Meg Flynn, a librarian, and other folks who have ties to the Colorado River and share their assistance, expertise, edits, and guidance, as well as historic photos, maps, and experiences. Mike's presentation will offer an overview of the Returning Rapids project and highlight some main areas of current focus including treasure maps, uh, historic places, and mud. And we encourage the audience during Mike's presentation to use the chat box or comment on the Facebook live stream. And Mike will be able to answer whatever questions you have after his presentation. Take it away, Mike. Oh, it says disabled participant screen sharing. Hi, everybody. I'm trying to get my screen up and going. Uh, so let's see. I am trying to share my screen and I'm getting a disabled thing. So small technical difficulty here. Hang in there. Right, while we... Mike, you should be good now. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can get that going. Zoomlandia is always so weird. So there we go. Someone should give me a, a heads up if my volume or if the screen doesn't look good, but uh, I'm just going to start going and you'll let me know if uh, there are any issues. So um, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Thank you very much for having me. As uh, Tom introduced me, my name is Mike DeHoff and I'm coming to you from Moab, Utah. And I am lucky enough to be a part of a project of a group of river runners who are studying the changes in Cataract Canyon as Lake Powell goes through a process of releveling. And um, we've done a couple different public presentations. Tonight uh, is gonna be different than some of the other ones we've done in that I wanna show you a little bit of some of the techniques we are using to dig around in the historic maps um, and the, the um, pre Glenningham photos we use. And I wanna talk with you about some of the things that are helping the rapids to come back in cataract and some of the things that are inhibiting the rapids to come back in cataract canyon. So for those of you who aren't familiar with where Cataract Canyon is, just a quick orientation. So Cataract Canyon is below the confluence of the Green and the Colorado in the heart of Canyonlands National Park. And um, it is 40 miles long and it is affected by Glen Canyon Dam and the impoundment known as Lake Powell that is 180 miles downriver. And so over on the left, you could see that all on the map and the four corners and everything. Over on the right, as we go through the different uh, photo archives and map and uh, pre Glen Canyon Dam archives, we come across cool stuff like maps. And this is a little map from 1923 
from a survey group that went down the Colorado from the town of Green River all the way through the Grand Canyon over a couple periods of years, and they noted and made maps as they went along. Uh, this gentleman, E.C. LaRue, the map that he made, um, he was a hydrologist and he was looking at places where he could potentially look at damming the Colorado. And even though I know this map in detail, the full map of E.C. LaRue is hard to see on many of your screens, what matters the most is I want you to understand the enormity of the area we're talking about. One of the cool things I think about, I'm such a map junkie, when I come across cool maps, I look at it and I think about the detail that is related. In, it. in this one, it is this massive map that was stitched together and then digitized. And it shows about 225 miles of river. And it is the confluence of the Green and the Colorado up on your right, all the way down to the Glen Canyon Dam or where it was just going towards Lee's Ferry um, on your left. And this whole area, there, it's not carved up. It's not, this is Canyonlands National Park. This is Glen Canyon Dam with Lake Powell overlaid on it. It's just a river flowing through a landscape. And it is so good because it offers details for us about what things were like before Lake Powell and before Glen Canyon Dam. And on this survey that happened in the 1920s, the other thing that came out of it was this group made a river profile. And some of you may have seen river profiles before, some of you may not. Let me give you a just quick little description of it. So the bottom uh, horizontal axis is river miles. River miles counting down from the Green River and Colorado confluence down to Lee's Ferry. And then on the vertical axis, that's elevations. And elevations for us are a key clue to try to find out where rapids are in Cataract Canyon and when they might be showing back up as Lake Powell and the sediment gets cleared out through Cataract Canyon. And so it's really important that we pay attention. I'm going to be talking a lot about elevations as we go through this presentation more. Um, but to try and show you the enormity of the effect of Lake Powell, what I did is I took all the profiles that were on that giant map that went along with that giant map that we just saw of E.C. LaRue, and I put them all into one page so that we can really look at this. And this is the profile from the confluence of the Green and the Colorado up on the right at about 3,900 feet above sea level, all the way down almost to Lee's Ferry, really more to the site of where Glen Canyon Dam was to be built. And so as we look at it, just to give you a little bit of context for that just big black line, Cataract Canyon is 41 miles long, it dropped 400 feet over what was 50 or 60 rapids. There was some dispute as to actually how many they were. Glen Canyon, I don't want to belittle it or give not a lot of information about it, but really the returning rapids project were really focused on Cataract Canyon. And that how Glen Canyon Dam, which is way down there on the left of your screen, how it, affect, it affected Cataract Canyon. Now, another important quality thing you need to know about our whole story is the Colorado and it's the big muddy river. Some of the scientists we work with with our project, one of them once told me, you gotta keep in mind how silt laden the Colorado is. It below the confluence carries seven Mississippi barge loads of sediment, of sand, of silt, of mud, every single day past, past any given point on the entire stretch. You gotta keep in mind of how much sediment that moves and you gotta really keep it in uh, the forefront because it really plays a big effect on what is happening with Lake Powell. So a little animation. Long time ago when they started and decided to build a dam, first they built a coffer dam, then they built the real dam. And then the river flowing in started to fill the reservoir that was impounded behind the dam. It quickly went up to 3,500 feet, which filled most of Glen Canyon and got to the toe of what is called Dark Canyon Rapid that we'll talk about. It took a little bit longer to fill the reservoir all the way up to the elevation of 3,700 feet. Really, it was 3,707, maybe 3,710, and you had a full reservoir. Now, keep in mind that still water can't hold sediment, but moving water does. And so those seven Mississippi barge loads of mud every day started coming in, and it started settling out. And where it settled out in was Cataract Canyon, and it just grew and grew and grew. 
around uh, 2000, 2001, there was a big drought and the, the reservoir level of Lake Powell dropped and it dropped 155 feet and the river was left to carve across its own sediment. As it did this, it mobilized some of that sediment, pushed it down. But keep in mind those seven Mississippi barge loads of mud are still also coming in. And it moved everything down. It moved the Delta further out of Cataract Canyon through a short little canyon called Narrow Canyon and into Glen Canyon. And it started inundating it, not just with water, but with mud. And it kept moving. Over the past 20 years, we've seen the reservoir kind of stabilize at about 3,600 feet. And we've seen the Delta continue, the mud Delta continue to move down, further down away from just Cataract Canyon and into Glen Canyon. And it gets us to where we are now. And so down in the bottom right, this is the Delta as we talk about it. This is the mud Delta, the sediment Delta from the river. This is where 58 years of those seven Mississippi barge loads of mud every day has dropped out. It's 45 miles long. It's 58 years of sediment. And I wanna take you on a journey across that Delta through pictures. We're gonna talk about Gypsum Canyon Rapid. We're gonna talk about Clearwater Canyon. We're gonna talk about Dark Canyon. And we're gonna talk about an issue that really is the tipping point right now for Cataract Canyon, the Perched River. And then we're gonna to go to the very face of the Delta where it is, the mud is interfacing with the reservoir waters and talk about all that stuff. So to so get into looking at pictures, the inundation of cataract. When cataract's completely full, when the Lake Powell's completely full, only 40% of Cataract Canyon isn't affected by the reservoir. 60% is either drowned or in the fluctuation of the reservoir as it goes up and down, it's 15 or 20 feet every year. A long time ago, it looked like this. It was all the way up to 3,700 feet. For the past 15 years, it's looked like this. The river has carved out of this area any remaining sediment that was deposited that was caused by the reservoir. The only thing that's remaining is the tree line that sort of shows you where the reservoir level once was. This is what we're calling Rapid 28, one of the returned rapids. Uh, a lot of the uh, old timers used to call it short rapids, so we're going to stay with that. This is at an elevation of 3,665 feet above sea level. And this was sort of the beginning of us asking, huh, we're seeing rapids come back that we didn't know were there. What's this all about? And we started digging around and looking. And someone said, have you guys ever seen a scroll map? And we were like, what's a scroll map? And in 1960s and in the 1970s, there was a fellow by the name of Les Jones, who's one of my heroes in this story, who took all the uh, topographic maps and stitched them together. And then he also took the river profile and laid it on his map also. And being such a good record keeper, then he went in and made notes where rapids were, what elevation they were at, what the names of rapids were, what the gradient through certain stretches were. And on this map, this was one of the first commercially available river maps. The Lake Powell actually inundated all the way up about two thirds of that map. And on the gradient down low on the profile, almost the whole way through that entire profile. But if you look down on the bottom left, it says, June 25th, 1971, Gypsum Canyon is the last rapid. And we now are watching Gypsum Canyon Rapid reemerge from the mud delta as the river carves its way through it. So upper left of your screen, that's in 2018 when we were just beginning to see little itty bitty riffles that were starting to show. Winter 2020, it was starting to come through a little bit more, but in the, even in the spring of 2020, there wasn't a big runoff, but for some reason it carved out just enough of the mud that it started giving gypsum some teeth. It's somewhere between a riffle or a rapid. And the historic elevation of this rapid was right around 3,620 feet above sea level. And you'll notice those silt beds that line the bank of the river, especially on the river right bank. That's all the sediment that the river has had to carve through to get down to Gypsum Canyon Rapid here. A couple of years ago, we were out with a group of University of Utah and USGS scientists. And one of the USGS guys said to us, you guys are referring to the sediment layer as the Lake Powell Formation. I think Powell's name has been drugged through the mud enough. 
And so on that trip, we deemed that that should be called the Floyd Dominey Formation. And why that is, who Floyd Dominey was, is he was the head of the Bureau of Reclamation. He championed the building of Glen Canyon Dam and the making of Lake Powell. Um, there are many times that have been documented where Dominey said, we don't need to worry about sediment. The reservoir will not be sedimented, said, deal with significant amount of sediment for hundreds of years or thousands of years. So we don't need to worry about it. And it's interesting. We kind of say, well, then we need to give credit where credit is due to this guy ignoring the amount of sediment that all a lot of people were saying was going to become an issue for Lake Powell. Here's a group of scientists walking around looking at the enormity of those seven Mississippi bargeloads of sediment dropping out in the upper part of Cataract Canyon. Imagine this, we've, we've got people talking to us from Mancos, Dolores, imagine your town being covered with 80 feet of mud. That's the level of stuff that we're looking at, that someone came in and allowed stuff to be covered with that much mud. That's what's going on. And other people saying, no, it won't be an issue. We don't need to worry about it. Moving down river, you can see how much that sediment is still there in places, but also sloughing off in others. So Pete Lafebvre, who is a vital member of our Returning Rapids Project, has done such a good job of documenting the change over time of the sediment right around the mouth of Clearwater Canyon. You could kind of see the little yellow dot that's a reference point. You could see how it's slumping in. And as it slumps in, the river carries it away. Because right here, what we're watching for is the return of this. This is Clearwater Canyon Rapid. This is taken by a USGS survey person named George Simmons in 1956. When I first saw this picture, I thought, wow, I can't wait to walk barefoot down that limestone ledge, maybe stop, dip my toes in the water, watch a few boats come through this rapid. We might see it. It might come back in the next 10, 15 years. We'll see. I want to show you some stuff that is going to affect it. If you were to look right up Clearwater Canyon from the mouth of the, from the river up the mouth of the canyon, you would see this. 1963, this is what it looked like. There was this fellow, Gregory Crampton, who did a hasty survey through there, and they took a lot of pictures to try to document what this area looked like. This is what it looks like in 2019. And the, the yellow circle is meant to give you kind of a point of reference. There's 40 feet of mud and sediment remaining. You could see those terraces of where the Dominey Formation is standing high there. And when I see this picture, it makes me think of something that the justification for a Glen Canyon Dam and Lake Powell was that there was nothing out there in this area, that there was nothing that people would miss. One of the things I really think about when I think about the canyons of the Colorado Plateau is it they hold their secrets and their beauty a little closer to their chest. And you have to go out there and look for it. You have to go out there to be able to walk through it, to hear the water trickling over the layers of rocks in Clearwater Canyon. These days when I walk through there, I can't help but think, what have we done? What have we done? Moving down Canyon a little bit more, this is Dark Canyon Rapid. This was one of the most feared rapids in all of the Colorado. This rapid, this picture was uh, probably, this is the first time it's been seen by the general public. We dug it out of the Crampton collection and this shows Dark Canyon Rapid in its fearsome high water best. There are waves in it that look to be as tall as the people that are standing near the shore having a look at it. Another view of Dark Canyon Rapid in 1956, um, it shows how the river was pushed all the way over against the wall and all the rock field that was being pushed out of a very large side canyon to cause it. Um, right where the rapid is right now, there's 120, 150 feet of mud covering it. But where, if you can see on your screen over on the right, there's a figure walking, we're starting to get deep enough soundings in the river that we think that the river has carved its way back almost to where that person is standing. It's getting very close. Now, one of the things that people ask us a lot is like, wow, when am I gonna be able to run Dark Canyon Rapid? I wanna go see it. And one of the questions I've been having with myself is, I don't know if we're ever gonna see that rapid as it was pre-Glen Canyon Dam again. 
And why that is, is that there's a whole bunch of not only river sediment that's settled out there, but there's been new side canyon debris that's flash flooded in there. And so this is kind of a complicated slide, but hopefully it shows you that the sediment is layering in and then you have new alluvial debris that causes rapids washing out of the mouth of Dark Canyon and there's the current river location. Last year, we were starting to get signs that there might be a riffle starting to form in Dark Canyon or right at the mouth of Dark Canyon. We'll see what it does this year. But in short, I don't think we're ever going to run the pre Glen Canyon Dam rapid at Dark Canyon again. But one of the biggest things that's going to affect if we ever run a rapid there is the next thing. And that is this thing, the Perched River, which is downriver by the Dirty Devil River and the Colorado's Confluence. To understand this slide, cue in on the yellow star. So in the yellow star in the upper right, you see that the river goes through a small shallowed wall canyon to the left of that point. We call that yellow star point the Dirty Devil Headwall. Down on the left, you can see how the river has been pushed over to the right. And there actually is a boat ramp right there because it's close to the road. And that's where the quote temporary takeout is these days. But the entire sediment, the sediment has filled the entire historic channel. And what that looks like from the uh, water's view is this. So again, the gold star is there. That's the Dirty Devil Headwall. This was the historic river channel. And you could see there's a hanging valley up there on the right. If you had x-ray vision, but you were down in the sediment, this is sort of what you'd see, a sediment filled river channel. There's the star that shows the Dirty Devil River, the Dirty Devil Headwall. And then the river is perched up by where the boat ramp is. And it's all the way up there, completely out of its channel. Note that there are cliff bands in there because those cliff bands could become a sediment caused waterfall. Looking at it from a satellite point of view, this would be what you'd see. You see where the Perch River is. I drew in the pre-reservoir river channel and where the North Wash boat ramp. Something you should know is if the river starts flowing over hard strata where it says the Perch River, it's going to create a waterfall. This wouldn't be the first of the waterfalls that are along the Colorado. There's one down um, below Grand Canyon near Pierce Ferry. There's one on the San Juan below Clay Hills crossing the takeout. The important thing to know about this is that if a waterfall forms there, it's gonna form a secondary dam and it's gonna start trapping sediment upriver of it. On the San Juan River, there are rapids that are going away because of the, the waterfall there. Um, it's an issue, it's a tipping point. And publicly for the first time in this presentation, I think we should talk about putting it back. I think the river is doing a good job of restoring itself and if we make a choice to try to put it back in its pre-reservoir river channel, it could really help the river to restore itself. One more match for you. And the important thing about this is I want you to understand the amount of sedimentation that's going on right now. The seven Mississippi barge loads every day is continuing to go there and it is continuing to build up. And when the reservoir has dropped down, then the Delta is exposed. So, uh, the photo on the left is from the 1960s. Again, Gregory Crampton was going through doing a big survey of this whole area of everywhere to be affected by Lake Powell. This uh, prehistoric set, the settlement of uh, prehistoric people is there. It was a place that uh, early river runners actually stopped and inscribed their names to. There was a John Wesley Powell inscription. In the cottonwood trees down below to the right, there was actually a town that when you took the height ferry across the river, that was where you landed and drove out another road. It's all covered in mud. All signs point to even that historic site being either swept away by a current that was displaced by the Delta or it's just covered in mud. Heritage, resource, the canyon full of mud. And if you back up a little bit more, this is what it looks like. So again, the cataract, in, in Cataract Canyon, the delta is on the move and it's at a tipping point. Um, this perspective, this what it looks like, this is a byproduct of mining the Colorado River for its water. This is what it looks like. 
and people need to know because Lake Powell is drying up before our eyes. The mud sediment is there and it's on the move and it continues to fill Glen Canyon. People say, drain Lake Powell. You could drain away water, but you can't really drain away the mud. It's important for all of us to know this is the largest settling pond in the Southwest and it is a tailings pile of people who are just taking water out of it and leaving everything else behind. But if you jump up the Delta, if you go back into Cataract Canyon, the one thing that's the best about moving mud is still doing its thing. Given the chance, the Colorado River is recovering and continue, can continue to recover from the effects of the reservoir, brings with it rapids, beaches, beavers, willows, cottonwoods, all the things that we hold dear and is beautiful along the river. And it's important that you know this. It's important that you take the time to care about rivers. And I think that's what's so important about what DRBA is doing. They're doing a great job of stewarding the Dolores. And thank you for your time to be here to pay attention to that. And thank you on their behalf for your donations to them. It is so important. We decided as a culture that it was okay to dam the Colorado River. We can decide what we do from here on out, whether we let rivers be restored, whether we take care of them, how we deal with our water resources. It's a complicated issue. I appreciate you taking a look at it with me. These are a lot of the people I would like to thank. Thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate it. You could visit our website and you could see more of the story unfold. And thank you very much for donating to DRBA. Now, how do I get out of this? <laughs>